Welcome to West Virginia on AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's Watchdog. It is 8, 11 p.m. here in downtown Wheeling, about 27 degrees out, and thank God it's not snowing anymore. <laughs> Uh, give us a call tonight, uh, 304-214-1600. If you're out of the area, give us a call toll-free, 866-514-1600. Uh, I'm Jordan Klein. Nick Queen. And Lola Miller. <laughs> you just get such a big grin when we do that. <laughs> I know you do. Every time. Uh, She's got a little color to her cheeks, too, when she does that. Too. She's, <laughs> She's embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> you're on the air all day. You should be used to this by now. Oh, you never get used to this. <laughs> really? I just want to put the camera on you for a while. No. I have to ask, have you ever had like a really bad experience, you know, just like get on and then just something just totally goes wrong? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> okay. Well. Are you kidding? No. Oh, we've had times where everything locks up and nothing will, you know, none of the computers will work. And but you're running Linux. Linux isn't supposed to do that, according to... All the forums I visit that tell me that Microsoft's horrible and Linux is the greatest thing under the sun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all here. Yeah. yeah. Um, last week we had on Gerald White, who was talking about the moon hoax, uh, saying we never landed on the moon. And uh, we, we have a voicemail uh, for the show. The mm-hmm. number's actually 973-215-9178. You can see it on our website, whispersradio.com. If you want and, to contact uh, us. We we got a lot of calls this week uh, about some, well, we had a lot of very angry calls. Well, it was mostly <laughs> emails. The, the, call was, the, the call was nice. He agreed with uh, Jared, which we'll play that in a second. The emails, first off, no, Jordan, myself, and Lo, I'm, I'm going to take it that you don't agree with this, that we destroyed the Challenger. Oh, no, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that either. One, I, one, one thing I heard was... Uh, uh, even in the state that America is in right now with all the problems we're having financially, everything like that, and we let a foreigner on the air who discredit America by saying... Well, there's a lot of Americans you know, that believe this, too, so... Yeah, we, it was just, uh, you know, just because we have somebody on the show here, doesn't mean I, that you have to be nice to them. Right here, listen, everybody. Oh, well, this guy was nice. He, he's actually... Well, come on, play. Yeah, well, we got uh, uh, one yeah, we'll of the recordings from one of the callers who... Uh, the views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. Warning! This program oh, contains strong part adult part language, part. violence, and brief nudity. <laughs> it's everything you're looking for. Just throw that out there. But, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the truth. Because we have somebody on does not mean that we agree well, with course. what they're saying or that we're promoting what they're saying is the truth. And, and it doesn't mean that you guys have to like them. You know, you don't have to withhold your phone calls for uh, you know, because you just don't want to be nice on the radio. I mean, you can say exactly what you feel and how you're thinking. Just and don't swear. That's, that's <laughs> well, we the only... Can, we that, can beep you know. that, right? Yeah, we got yeah, it, that's, that's, I'm telling you, I that's got, I got this pretty wracking I got a red button worry about dying to push. <laughs> Uh-huh. I said, I got a red button up here. I'm dying to push. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I'll let you do it then. And if you miss, it's on you. But how bad were these things? Really bad? No, just people, you know, a I, 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 few of the ones that I remember reading the most were the ones that said, oh, so you guys agree, believe that we destroyed the Challenger? I, I don't believe that. Uh, back where I used to live in North, in North Carolina, I lived near Beaufort. And uh, one of the airfields there is Michael Smith Airfield. Mm-hmm. which Michael Smith was one of the astronauts that was on this shuttle. And, you know, I learned all about it in school, you know, coming up in high school and stuff. We talked about it a lot. And, you know, and, and I do not think, I think it was an accident. Do I think somebody maybe was negligent? Sure. Yeah. I, you know, that, th- that stuff like that happens. We, we make a mistake. We have to learn from those mistakes. I don't think he was somebody that... Did it on purpose. I don't think we did it on purpose, yeah. correct. And, you know, we have accidents. Not everything's a conspiracy, but, you know... That's but that if it wasn't for conspiracy theory the show. <laughs> That's true. But I think we said after he hung up that, you know, he we, he was kind of believable. I mean, there was some things that he brought up about. He you had know, a good that, story. Yes. Yeah. But he lost all of us any credibility when he said that about the Challenger. That was like, okay. But, I mean, you know, you can separate. I mean, some people are going to believe different things that I'm not going to, you know. I can take piecemeal, you know, okay, mm-hmm. I agree with you on this, I don't agree with you on this, you know, and that's, and that's what radio is for, that's what all this that's is right. for. So, let's go ahead and just play the clip from Rick, Rick's a really great guy from uh, Las Vegas, 
And uh, he we'll listens you know to the show, so that's a plus. Yeah. So <laughs> he's, he's a great guy in our books. Okay. <laughs> We got it. Penny, it's moving slowly. Hi, Nick, Jordan. Well, it's me, Rick, in Las Vegas. Just wanted to uh, call and concur with everything that uh, Jerry White shared with you last week on the program. Um, I've been uh, watching his videos and uh, doing ones of my own for. Uh, we, I was seven, eight months now. Uh, if you watch Radioactive Anomaly, that's Jarrah's uh, uh, last radiation video at YouTube. You'll uh, you'll find yourself very informed about the uh, radiation issue. I just want to add a little bit to it. Um, there's a lot of talk about uh, the uh, radiation belt, and when NASA talks about it, especially NASA shills like Phil Plate, they say things such as, "Well, the astronauts." went really quickly through the uh, uh, thinnest part of the belt in, uh, in an hour. Okay. That's the most intense part of the belt, yes. They went through it in an hour. And on the way back, they spent another hour in it. And in addition to that, they spent about 10 more hours each trip, so 20 hours total, in the outer Van Allen belt, which can become much more intense during solar magnetic storms. What they don't tell you is that Apollo was uh, – the missions were during solar max. It's an 11-year cycle, and that uh, solar max means there's more solar flares, more intense flares. Uh, you get coronal mass injections, which are huge. I mean, larger than the sun and, and emissions from the sun. Um, then you have the solar wind, which is constant. So now you got the guys in tin cans, basically, <laughs> okay? going through these huge, uh, these in the hugely intense radiation belts, okay? They get through them. Now they're subjected to uh, all kinds of radiation because the magnetosphere is not around them anymore. They're not protected. So they're getting hit with one to four gamma ray bursts a day, which that's what they're recording now. NASA's recording one to four a day. So they're getting hit with, and that's gamma rays now. And then gamma goes right through lead, so they have no protection from that. And then they have these hundreds of solar flares that were happening during each mission that they're being hit with. Constant solar wind hitting them, which uh, I think one program that I watched on TV uh, called them a lethal, uh, or um, I don't know, it's, it's solar wind is radioactive as well. It's got particles that from the sun, that it, protons that are going to cause you to have problems. So you got solar wind constant. Now constantly, you're constantly hit by solar wind. You're constantly hit by background radiation from space, which is isotropic. It goes at you no matter where, which direction it's coming from. Then you've got the moon. Now you get to the moon, you have a great big rock with no magnetic field around it that's been constantly irradiated for billions of years by solar flares. All right, this is it, part two, and I'm done. Anyhow, you're on the moon. Once you get to the moon, you get, you're on a rock that's been irradiated for uh, four billion years at least that we know of. Uh, by constantly, by galactic cosmic rays, solar uh, radiation in all forms, be it the coronal mass ejection, solar flares, and solar wind. So, and it, see, now the moon has no magnetosphere, so it can't ward any of this off. It just constantly is hit by it. So the moon makes Three Mile Island look like kitty playland, okay? It's very highly radioactive. Now, go ahead and watch your Apollo videos and watch these guys bouncing around, falling down, laughing, Picking up rocks and pretending like everything's hunky dory on the moon when it's a radioactive wasteland. There's just no way. It's too unbelievable when you know the facts. And the facts are that the radiation would have killed them. And uh, that's why it's been, that's why uh, Jera White pointed out as being the number one reason why we didn't go. That's why Ralph Rene pointed out the same thing. That's why, uh, NASA scientists, radiation experts, the best they can come up with how the Apollo crew was able to survive it is, uh, well, one, they weren't in there long enough. They were only out there for like 10 days, right? That's not too long. Okay, that's kind of a BS excuse if you ask me. Uh, number two is uh, they were lucky. The astronauts were lucky. Okay, I live in Las Vegas. I don't believe in luck. Anyhow, uh, there's so much more. This, this issue, I mean, this, this 
Apollo fraud goes into so many veins, and there's just so many avenues to see the hoax for what it is. But uh, radiation is, is the um, number one. That's the reason they had to fake it. They just couldn't do it, and they can't do it today. And if you look and you research it now, you'll see that they're trying to come up with some sort of magnetic shielding to put around the ship because they realize there's no way that they're going to shield themselves with anything um, that is solid. Which is not going to happen. And the weight issues for using water is, is out of question, too. So they have to create a magnetic shield around the ship. Well, if they're going through all this problem, just think logically. If they're going through all this, spending millions of dollars and all this research and all this to find a way to shield themselves from radiation. What does that say about 1969 through 72? They just went winged it, took a risk. I don't think so. Anyhow, thanks for letting me uh, speak with you guys. Um, keep on plugging away at the uh, paranormal, and uh, I'll be listening. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, that was uh, Rick from Las Vegas. Uh, like I said, you guys have you know if you guys have an opinion on our show, you give us a call, write us an email, and uh, we'll definitely make sure your opinion gets heard. We want to hear like from it. anybody, whoever whoever it is, whatever opinion you have. You know, we're not going to make fun of you. We, we have different opinions that people would laugh at us, but who cares? <laughs> Opinions and opinion is an opinion. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break, uh, then get our guest on the line. Uh, give us a call here, 214-1600, toll-free, 866-514-1600. You're listening to Whispers. Do you want to dive into the bizarre world of the paranormal? Do ghosts, UFOs, or the supernatural amaze you to the point of wanting to learn more? Then you need BVRN, the Black Vault Radio Network. With more than 750 hours of on-demand talk radio, syndicated for more than 35 shows, the Black Vault Radio Network is your one-stop shop for the world of the unexplained. Check us out and tune in 24 hours a day, www.blackvaultradio.com. Again, that's www.blackvaultradio.com. Welcome back to Wisdom Radio on AM 1600 to be KKX, the Valley's Watchdog. Uh, my name is Jordan Klein. I'm here with Nick Queen, Lola Miller, and our guest, Ms. Sherry Brake-Recco. Sherry is the uh, operator of Haunted uh, Heartland Tours uh, within the top 10 percent, uh, on the top 10 list from uh, Haunted America for uh, 2007, 8, and 9, three years in a row. Yeah, woohoo. Hey. Hey, how, Sherry. How can, are you guys tonight? We're doing good. How are you? Good. I good. can barely hear you. Is there, Uh-oh. Oh, it, the, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Hey. There hey. you are. How's everything going? It's been, I'll tell you what, this has been a crazy year. I'm, I'm kind of glad I survived Halloween and got through the month of October. Oh, we, we were, I don't know about Lola, but Nick and I were really disappointed we couldn't oh, go to the I pen. was too. I was too. And so were all the listeners during the day because that, the day I announced that I was going to do it, I had more men call me and tell me they would never do it. <gasps> and so it was like, okay, now I have to prove it. Oh. So we do definitely have to get together and do this. Oh, definitely. And you know what? I, I've already got uh, all of my dates secured for 2009 with the West Virginia Pen. And uh, the first one coming up is going to be March 28th. And okay. that's, a, that's a Saturday night. Okay. Um, and then there's 10 other dates from then on hmm. out. Uh, a couple of the months we're actually down there twice. Oh, wow. Uh, that's one of my favorite places mm-hmm. to investigate and that's why i keep going back for more i never get tired of it well there's so much history there it's so such history. a big place anyway oh it's, yeah it's, it's huge uh you know the, the paranormal activity the hauntings um it's a fascinating place and, and for me to never get tired of it says something because i'm in those haunted buildings a lot um and there's some buildings uh, you know across the nation that we'll only go to once a year uh but the pen it just keeps drawing me back love that place well, Sherry, let me ask you, the Capitol, I just found out tonight, and I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but we had a caller named Barb, and she called and said that the Capitol Music Theater mm-hmm. is 
really haunted and that when she was working there as as a 13, 14, 15-year-old, mm-hmm. there was a, a woman in white that would move across the stage all the time, a man that sat up in the balcony with like a top hat and, and tails on, um, a rigger or a stage hand that would mess with you if you were backstage, right. you know. Yeah, yeah, I've heard stories about that place, too, and, and it makes great sense because any place where you have a lot of traffic, mm-hmm. you have a lot of emotion, uh, you know, a place like that where there's excitement from the crowd, you've got, you've got the music, you've got the musicians, um, all that energy kind of gets left behind. And, and any place like that is a great place to investigate. It's a great place for the foundation of paranormal activity. It's, it's a theater, um, you know, places like churches, auditoriums, uh, hotels. Um, you know, museums, places where you get a lot of people coming and going, they can leave that energy behind, and it kind of gets imprinted on the atmosphere. And, uh, you know, it can kind of fuel up those hauntings. Uh How can we get in there, Sherry? (laughs) I'm sure we can pull some strings. Okay. (laughs) you want to get to work on that? Yes, please. Okay. You can get in there. We're we're signed up for the first time you go in. Yes. March 28th? (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking about the theater. We're going to the prison oh, no matter what. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, great, good. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll hold you some spots on we'll that. We'll go wherever you go. I'll tell you. It's, it's a blast to be able to do what I do and uh, um, not have to go to jail for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. It's, it's so much fun. Hey. <laughs> you see, one, one of the things, Sherry, that we, we really enjoy about going on tours with you is you really know the history of the places. You know, you have to know the history because you can't you cannot understand why a place would be haunted without at least having the basics down pat. And, you know, I get people that are history buffs all the time that take the tours, and you got to be able to answer those questions. You know, what style of architecture is this? What stood here before this building was here? You know, when was it built? Who built it? When did the doors close? Uh, you know, you got to be able to answer those questions. You look pretty stupid. And uh, I, just, I just eat up history. I absolutely love it. And the pen has got it. I mean, uh, you know, you look at the building that's the second largest building in the state of West Virginia. Uh, you look at the fact that that was built with, with prisoner labor. Um, you look at the people that were there. You look at 998 murders and suicides. Yeah. Uh, you know, 85 hangings, nine electrocutions. Um, it's a pretty violent place. You know, some of the worst offenders in the nation were held there. And that stuff just doesn't go away. It, it hangs out. You know, there's a big, uh, a big legend or a, a saying among the prisoners that if you die in prison, mm-hmm. you, you stay in prison. You don't cross over. You're, you're always there. And, wow. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's got a different feel to it. There's certain areas when you walk those darkened hallways, there's certain areas that you walk into, and you can't catch your breath. Oh, yeah. Well, North Hall, it's always the one that gets me. I mean, you yeah. walk in there, and it's, I mean, first off, it's claustrophobic, and that's hard to be. It's hard to be claustrophobic in that building. I mean, it's right, right, because it's so huge. I mean, but you walk in the north, and you got the chain link fence, yep. you know, that's keeping everybody down, and it's just—it seems like all the walls are just closing it's, in on it's you. It's oppressive. It is oppressive. I, I had a uh, ghost hunting 101 class at the Pen uh, two Fridays ago, and uh, we had 18 people in the class. And North Hall, of course, is one of the paranormal hotspots. <clears throat> we visited that that night. We also went to the uh, the psych ward. Uh, the medical infirmary. Oh, God, um, I bet that was... Yeah, those, those places. You know, I, I don't like to fuss with taking that group to places that are not active. I just like to do the classwork and then get out there and, and hit those hot spots. The boiler room is another spot that people tend to get creeped out in, and, mm-hmm. you know, it tends to be some activity, and people get a little anxious while they're down there in the dark. And uh, Well, isn't with that where that one guy got... We I watched that Ghost Adventures. Right, the Travel Channel. Yes, Ghost and yeah. it, in fact, it was on... And we had just said we were going to go and do this. Mm -hmm. So I went home. If I had had these guys' home phone number, I would have called them that night and said, that's it, I am not doing it, (laughs) because it scared me silly. And then I had relatives here like three weekends in a row, so I popped it on and said, this is where I'm going. And they're all looking at me like, you are out of your mind, woman, out of your mind. Well, you know, the the crew that does that, the Ghost Adventures, uh, Zach Baggins and Nick Groff and Aaron Goodwin, they're... You know, they're in it because they, they like the excitement. And I, I like their approach because they're a little bit different than TAP, you know, than Ghost Hunters. Um, they go in there and they just, they're in there for the moment. And, um, you know, they filmed there at the pen a couple months ago and, and the show came out. And, you know, for the most part, I'd say probably 70% of everybody that I talk to love Ghost Adventures. 
Yeah, I like it. It was a fun show. I told I was uh, playing Jordan them last week. They were jumping at a lot of stuff, and Jordan contends that well, they're in the dark. You know, we walk around with lamps, and I, I'll give him that, I guess. But. Right, right, and of course that's you know new territory for them. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it is a good show, and you know, Paranormal State's a, a decent enough show. You got to have drama with television. Oh yeah. And, and that's the bad thing. If you could just suck all that drama out and just have what they're there to get. It'd be great for us as investigators, but it wouldn't really draw the ratings. Yeah, yeah. You can move to England. Love that drama. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about think? most haunted? <laughs> Eng- English oh, no. movies are, are non oh, entertaining. Oh, okay, the English movies. Oh, oh English movies that. are too entertaining. Will you stop James it? James Bond. That's what I was going right, to say. All right. Hey, so. I, ha- I had a chance to film with the Travel Channel. Oh, really? Did you? I told you guys. Yeah, I did. It's already been on. Um, I filmed back in January. It was the first week in January, and it was at the Mansfield Reformatory up here in Mansfield, Ohio. Now, that's where Shawshank was done. That's where Shawshank was done. Air Air Force One uh, was filmed there, and um, a couple other movies, but Shawshank was the big one. Do we get a copy of your video? Uh, Yeah, you know, when I get a copy of it. (laughs) 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 It's in rotation, though. You can still catch it on the Travel Channel. It's um, America's most... Scariest location. Oh, I've seen that on demand. I, I okay. haven't looked at the individual yeah. shows that they have on there, but I've seen okay. the title on yeah, it. I'm on see if it's on for demand. Like three minutes, so don't blink. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was that was exciting to kind of film with them. It was an 11 hour. They filmed for 11 hours and then ended up having you know a five minute segment. Okay. <laughs> well, I've been in a movie too, and I know how that is. It's like <coughs> by the time we started sober, and by the time we ended, we were really drunk. So, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it took us for it was a bar scene, and we had to, you know, keep the uh, props takes. going. Yeah. Right. Can we right. ask what kind of movie this was? Uh, well, it was that movie, The Courier, that we had the red carpet thing here for, and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. I've never heard of that. I'm sorry. I, I was bar ho number three in this. <laughs> I had screen credit, you guys. I've never heard of it. I'm going to have to look it up. Oh, my I'm gosh. sorry. We can't look it up. It never <laughs> made it past the opening here, but. <laughs> Too funny. Good Lord. Yeah, that well, was my I'm big honored, debut. I'm honored, your, I'm honored by your presence. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. I will autograph anything you'd like me to autograph. <laughs> and Jordan and I are left out. We've never been in a movie. <laughs> oh, goodness. So. That's now, too funny. Okay, going back to West Virginia State Penitentiary before we start feeling really bad. Um, <clears throat> I just get a look from both of them like, wow, what are you? So other than you, uh, I'm lost. I'm done. The pen. Yes, with the pen. Okay. I, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. okay. Uh, you've been there. When was the last time you were there again? Oh, two, two Fridays ago. Okay. And then last Friday, I uh, uh, spent the night at the Mansfield Reformatory. Ah. So. You go you go there a lot, too. I remember talking um, to you about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, next year I've got it booked for six six dates, and I've got the pen for ten. Yes. So I've got 16 prison dates next year and a couple lunatic asylums. Life is good. <laughs> tuberculosis sanatorium and a couple Mothman tours thrown in there, and it's pretty well-rounded for 2009. <laughs> Wow. I would think those sanitarium or sanatoriums would be really depressing. Well, you know, it's a different energy. Uh, the sanatoriums have um, a less aggressive energy to them as opposed to the pens and the reformatories because you had sick people. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, with uh, the sanatoriums that we go to uh, uh, in Weston, you know, it's the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. And um, That know, would be scary. It's you look at the fact that that's the largest stone-cut building in America. That place is huge. They have something like four miles of indoor corridors. Oh, my 902 wow. patient rooms. Oh, where is this at again? Weston. Weston, Ohio? Uh, no, Weston, West Virginia. How far away is that from here? Yeah, I'm, not used yeah. to, I'm not familiar with that it place. Is, um, it's, off of, it's off of 33. It's, a, it's west of Buchanan. It's right off of 79. Down like in the middle of the state. Oh, oh okay. God. <laughs> Nick, Nick or I, neither one are from here. I'm not well, 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 no, I'm not either. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> where, hey, where, by, where compared to Elkins? I know where Elkins is. Oh, dear. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, it would be northwest. Okay. Maybe northwest? Or maybe a little bit more west. Yeah, just go down the river. Float down the river for a while. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find it in there. That's how we get most places. It's in Lewis County. Does that help you? 
No. I, I, th I think I know where it is. We'll get a map out later. My God. We're going to have to go with you to this. Yeah, we'll know where the heck it is. I think you need supervision, all three of you. <laughs> we do. Most of the time, we have supervision. That's why they have Lola in here with us. She's a babysitter. She's paid like six twenty-five an hour, and they give oh, her a pizza. Oh, dear God. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need knee pads and helmets on. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I, I they tell Nick's wife all the time. I was like, did you let him outside without his helmet again? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, point. back to the pen. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? The, the pen, the pen is, a, is, a, is a wonderful place to investigate, and there's some areas there that people don't even realize. You know, as you're walking throughout the building and walking outside of the building, you walk through these areas, and you have no idea what took place there. Um, one, let me give you one example, the bullpen area. It's the area that has the basketball court. Okay. And when you're out there and you're walking around, you're like, oh, this is just an exercise area. Uh-uh. It's not just an exercise area. Because back when they did all the executions, that exact spot is where the death house stood at. Oh, my gosh. So you're walking across the basketball court, and you're like, oh, big deal. This is not a good place to investigate. Nothing ever happened here. Oh. Well, they had, uh, I don't know, you know, they had old Sparky. And mm -hmm. before that, they had the hanging scaffolding that they hung you off of. Uh, they did hangings up until 1949. And I think a lot of people don't realize this because uh, you, you watch MTV's Fear, and, of course, they've got some chair oh. who knows what it is underneath the, you know. They ruined it. Yeah, and they no. did. And, it, you know, they said, well, this is where it all happened. And no. it was. And I don't even know who, where it was. No, Probably and you closet. know what? MTV is not permitted back on, on site there at the pen. They, they were not very nice. And they were not very professional when they were down there. And they're not welcome to come back. It's, it's MTV. Uh, it is MTV. Yeah. And, uh, you know, although that did get Moundsville out there, you know, to, to the media, uh, on TV and stuff, and everybody was loving it. There was a lot of stuff in that show that wasn't, that was not correct. There's no Egyptian room. They talk about this Egyptian room. Yeah. No, there's no Egyptian room. They show the prison cemetery. There's no prison cemetery right there. It's four miles away from the building. Um, you know, they just made up a lot of. When they stuff. painted the uh, some of the Mothman yeah. or whatever they were in the uh, sugar, sugar Shack. shack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean so most of those, a lot of those paintings that are up on the walls now in the Sugar Shack are see, not like, real. Well, you ever see the gray ones that have like wings on them? Looks the like, Mothman like, one. The moth, yep. look like a moth on the wall. Those were, those were all added by MTV to, I guess, yeah, for the, some the effect. Sugar shack, the Sugar Shack was the recreational area for the guys. They had one hour of exercise a day. And if it was bad outside and snowing or icy or raining, they couldn't get outside for their outdoor recreation, so they had to go someplace else, and they went down underneath the prison into what was called the sugar shack uh they had pool tables down there um you know they had artwork on the walls um you know it was a place to hang out for and nobody hour. ever died there i know there was they nobody ever died there yes. that, that has been recorded but there were an awful lot of people that uh, were beat up uh wounded um, there was a lot of homosexual activity that took place down there and that's where the the name sugar shack came from Ew. they weren't selling candy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I really didn't think, but what's up with this Egyptian room? What were they? Why I I didn't see that. Well, why would the prison thing? have an Egyptian room in the first well, place? That's not, I don't know if it was leftover Halloween, um, you know, something from leftover from Halloween, and they just got the idea to call it the Egyptian room or what? You know, they have a haunted dungeon there. Yeah. Dungeon of Terrors every every October. And, yeah, um, I've been through that. Yeah, yeah. That scared me. By itself, <laughs> you know, it's one thing to have a haunted, a haunted house, but it's it takes it to a whole other level when you have a haunted house on a location that's haunted. <laughs> a haunted house in a haunted house. Yeah. Well, this is how bright my. <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you this, Sherry. You may say, "Forget it, Lola. Can't come anymore." <laughs> but um, my sister, my nephew, and I decide we're gonna we're gonna do this. So we're just you know sticking in a group by ourselves. They put us in that maze. Mm. They actually had to come and get us out. <laughs> 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 We this, couldn't find this our way is out. Be fun. <laughs> did, did you take a ride in the coffin? I don't know what we did. No. No, you didn't no. get in the coffin? No. Okay. No. Okay, that's probably a good thing then. Yeah, <laughs> I'd it's still actual, be there. It's an actual coffin on wheels, and it's on a 100 foot ramp. Oh my gosh. And, and you get in and you lay down. And now I don't know if they had it this year, but I know they had it last year because they showed it to me. They were very proud of it. And, uh,. It was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you actually laid down. They put the lid down, and you. <laughs> this doesn't sound I safe that at all. Of breath I, I can't. I can't. You should do see that. the faces she's making right now. <laughs> and you roll about a hundred foot into some mattresses that stop you gently 
at the end of the ramp. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, real gently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I have this thing, for, it's from sneaking into drive-in movies and trunks mm-hmm. of cars back mm-hmm. when I was at a very vulnerable age. Right, I can't do small areas like that'll that. That'll do it to you. Yeah, yeah. Camaros don't have big trunks. Mm. So. <laughs> That's, that could be its own show right there. <laughs> it could. Or was paranormal all by herself. <laughs> So. Oh, my goodness. That's too funny. Yeah. So what's oh. the scariest thing that's ever happened to you there? I mean, I'm taking uh, it. You probably, have you ever been on the on the tour itself, the haunted, uh, like the ghost tour? Not the ghost <laughs> tour. The Halloween tour. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm, oh, I ha- no. I, now, I have not done the haunted prison because I, ha- I had 42 events in October of my own. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you don't have time. Yeah, I didn't. I was all over the state and out of the state, and it just, uh, October is a absolutely crazy month for me. It's, a, it's my Christmas season. Yeah. <laughs> so did you find some good, good haunted places this past October? Well, you know, I, I did a lot of library presentations and museums talks and things like that, and I, I do haunted history walking tours uh, in Northeast Ohio, and I do a lot of haunted dinners and things like that. October is not a good month to try to take people into any of the prisons, because all the prisons have haunted houses, yeah. and they, they shut down for their private tours. Yeah. Um, they focus mainly on that haunted house, and even uh, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum over in Weston they have a haunted psychiatric hospital. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and my sister <laughs> took her kids over there, and she said, uh, you know, she's got a couple teenagers, and they're like, this is not going to be scary. This is not going to be scary. And I guess they were clutching each other in fear. <laughs> I guess they had cages with little children in them, oh. little white nightgowns and, uh, and fake blood. Little kids are scary. Oh, Nick, my gosh. Nick's sweating already. I, you, yeah. If I ever see a little kid on any of the uh, tours that I ever mm-hmm. go on. I mean, this—that's it. <laughs> it's over. I'm well, leaving. Well, you know, you got to watch too when you're when you're putting on these haunted, you know, haunted houses in these locations where people suffered. You got to you have to be really careful. You don't cross lines. You know what I mean? I would think. Um, and and I know there's been a lot of controversy with with Weston State Hospital opening back up and doing some of the events that they do. And you got to be real careful because you know these people were handicapped and. Um, I don't know. You know, there's there's a fine line there. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember if it was we were talking to you or someone else. This isn't the place they're also doing, like, um, Ouija boards, is it? Um, Yeah, it's funny that you brought that up. Oh. (laughs) Um, They do. uh, They they do not have an anti-Ouija board policy like all of the other big haunted facilities. They allow you to bring in Ouija boards. You're kidding. No, and they actually have a room set aside for table tipping as well. And you know, you've got you to you be really careful because I would say probably 80% of people out there are scared of Ouija boards. Um, and it offends a lot of people because it, with Ouija boards, you just have to be careful. You can use them as a tool, yes, but don't use it as a game. No, and so many people do, and... and um I, there's just things that have have because I had one when I was a lot younger, mm-hmm. and things happened that were unexplainable. Right. And we it, it just got put away, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, and I, now I have a healthy respect for them. You have to, and you know, Ouija boards have been around for thousands of years. Not not the kind that we're used to seeing that you can buy at Toys R Us. <laughs> you know, but they've been around. They were hand carved. Um, they were sheets of wood. It, they were beautifully carved way back when. And uh, they've been used through the ages by different cultures as a type of uh, divining yeah. or divination where you could get answers from the other side. Problem is with that, and I always use this in my ghost hunting classes, I always say when you use a Ouija board, it's like living in New York City and opening up your front door and telling everybody to come on in. Mm-hmm. Because you get the homeless, you get the sick, you get the deviants. That's what you get right off the bat. And with a Ouija board, how are you so sure that these answers that you're getting are actually from entities that you need to be listening to? You don't. You don't. Well, now they're calling them angel boards. Have you yeah, ever heard of those? Yeah, they're trying to get around. Yeah, and now I've, I've got an uh, anti-Ouija uh, board policy and also the, the uh, no angel board policy because it's basically just a board with the letters, with the numbers, with the yes and the no. You use that planchette, which is what you put your fingers on yeah. to move around the board, but they have little pretty angels painted on the board. A rose by any other mm-hmm. name smells the same. Right. You know, I yeah. just know I wouldn't, I, 
you know. I mean, has anything ever happened to you, you know, at a place and somebody brings out one that you don't know about that something bad happens? Well, you know, I've never been around when anything bad has ever happened uh, with the use of a Ouija board. Last time I used one, uh, it actually ended up being in a book um, by John Kachuba. Uh, it's a book called Ghost Hunters, and we did an investigation up here in Ohio, and we had an angel reader who came. She's a psychic medium, and she brought along a Ouija board. And we sat at this old farmhouse table out in the middle of nowhere and uh, set up some camcorders and used the Ouija board and asked a series of questions. And the weird thing is, I had, my, uh, I had a camcorder set up on a tripod, and every time the psychic would answer, or every time she would ask a question, and we would start to get the answer, the focus on my camera would go in and out, in and out, in and out. Hmm. And it was really bizarre because it didn't happen while she was asking the question. It was when we started to move our hands, you know, and it just was just really bizarre. And it wasn't a focusing issue because I got up several times in the frame and moved around, and it didn't do that focus in, focus out thing. It was only as we were getting the answers back, which is a little weird. You think it was like maybe the energy that was coming yeah. in was making it do that? Who knows, but um, that was the last time I did that. That was um, 2006, I think, 2005. Yeah, I, uh, you just have to be really cautious with the whole Now, can you tell me what's the scariest thing that's happened to you at, like, the pen? At the pen? You know, it's not just one single event there. It's multiple events. It's You're not looking happy, Sherry. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to say I was shut down the steps? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, as long as you weren't injured. Yeah, no, right. no, no. Um, you know, me, I've been doing this for so long that it, I guess maybe possibly what happens to me might really frighten somebody else, but to me it's just like another day. You know, clock in, clock out. Oh, something levitated off the table. Oh, how about that? <laughs> That's happened to you down there? No. Oh, okay. Well, his mouth dropped. <laughs> well, it was like, can they levitate a human? <laughs> now, now, how yeah. much, like, the, the Indian mound out front, have you ever investigated that, like, by itself? And, and what does that kind of play into the well, prison? Yeah, it, it, it's a theory, and, it, and it's just a theory I have. But, um, you know, I think last time I was on the show, we talked about ley lines. Yeah. Uh, invisible lines of energy and whatnot. They crisscross the entire globe. These aren't lines that you can see. Um, but they're lines that some people can feel, and there's a belief that the ancient tribes, the ancient people could feel that energy. And they would place their burial mounds, uh, their sacred stone circles, um, their Indian villages. Uh, you know, their Are you there, they, Sherry? Yes, I am. Okay. They, okay. Would, uh, they would place those uh, on top of these ley lines. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, with, with, the, uh, with the grave uh, mound being right across the street, uh, it makes good sense that that was placed, you know, right on top of a ley line. And you've got that natural earth energy that's coming through the area. And that's just a couple hundred feet away from the penitentiary. Yeah. So if you've got that earth energy fueling that area and you've got a building that's built there that uh, housed violent criminals and had all this death and murder and suicide, and on top of that, you've got the material that the building was built from it was stone that was quarried locally and it's got a lot of quartz crystal content Hmm. that stuff can hold energy as well so you've got three things working right there you've got all that death all that imprinted energy all that tragedy and trauma you've got the the crystal in the building and you've got the ley line and that just sets you up for a double or i should say a triple whammy Wow, it's like Hell's Gate's going to open or something there at some point in time. Well, Hell's Gate would actually be in Wilder, Kentucky, and it's in an old country. Really? Yeah. (laughs) There it is. Wow. Bobby Mackey's country palace. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Can I ask why? Can you ask why? Sure, I have to know. Hey, have you you ever heard of it? No. No, No. I was just saying that. (laughs) (laughs) Why Wilder, Kentucky? Well, it's, it's a country music bar, um, and that gives you enough excuse to, have, to have it be haunted. <laughs> um, but there's been several books written about it, and there was uh, a couple murders that happened on site there, and it's very violent energy, very a very bad place to be. If, if you're lucky, they will let you go down into the basement. <laughs> What's the name of this thing again? Bobby Mackey's Country 
Bobby Mackey's Country Palace, I think is the name of it. There's a website. If you would put in Bobby Mackey, it'll it'll bring it right up. And okay. th- he's even written a country song about it. He's a country performer, and he owns the bar. And there's been some books written about it. Um, and it's been on a haunting. Have you ever seen that um, series? No. I've seen a couple of the episodes. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah, yeah, it's Bobby Mackey's, and it's right on the it's right on the river. Is this somebody mm. I should try to get on the show? Would this you know what? That might be a good idea. There we go. You uh, want me to send you his contact? Info? Yeah, give me his contact information. Okay. I can do that. Any violent energy? I know you've been here. I'm guessing, right? You've mm. been. Yes, I have. Have you been what? in the basement? Uh, no, I haven't been in the basement, but I've been at the bar. <laughs> Does that count? Was this an investigation? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was mixing spirits with spirits. <laughs> I'm sure you were. <laughs> you, just, you weren't part of a movie, you know, mixing spirits and spirits. No, I, I actually stopped there one afternoon, and, and I did not have enough time to even go into the fact that I wanted to bring a bus there. I was just checking it out on my own, just picking up on the vibe. And um, it, it's got, I'll tell you what, there's just some places you walk into and you know you just know you get that gut feeling. Yeah. I didn't have to have any equipment. Wow. It just was sick. It smacked you, know? you in the face as soon as you walk in the door. Well, I actually lost some of my hair. You know how long my hair is. Yeah. It, it, it's down almost, you know, past my waist. As I exited from the building, my head got jerked backwards, and it felt like somebody had grabbed my hair and had pulled my hair back. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm grabbed by the ghost. But here what happened is my hair got caught in the lock on <gasps> the door, and it ripped out like just a, oh. Ooh. It was painful, Ooh, but yeah. I thought for sure it was something paranormal, and I was a little disappointed. Just so it was it's crazy. just the hardware. <laughs> That's not the normal response. Like, oh, I wish it was a ghost. I know. I wish a ghost it. ripped my hair out. Yeah, oh, yeah but that, That's that a better building, story. <laughs> that building's referred to as Hell's Gate. Hell's wow. Gate. Yeah. I've not, never heard of that place. before. Do you believe that in that, that there is a, a, truly a real Hell's Gate somewhere? I think that there are many portals. Portals being places to enter and exit. Yeah. Uh, I think that when you start talking about portals, you're talking about dimensions. When you start talking about parallel dimensions and other universes, you're starting to talk quantum physics. And if we do that, I have to get a pot of coffee on because it gets really deep. Okay. (laughs) We'll save that for a day when we've got a lot of time. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating subject. I think so. I think so. These guys, I'll tell you, they really, you know, everybody figured it was a good fit that I would work with them when, when we started the show. Okay. And I, I'll be honest, I thought, oh, brother, you know, it's <laughs> 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> I have learned so much. Some of it, of course, is information that it's like, oh, well, that was just an hour that we lost that we'll never get back. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like a wormhole. Yeah, yeah. But other other things, you know. And I love talking to you. I I can't wait until we can do yeah, something no, together. But I, I would enjoy that. And I, I'll, I'll tell you what. When I first met Jordan and Nick, it was at the Pen. It was for one of the ghost hunting classes that I was doing down there. And you know, when you meet people, you click with them. Yeah. Sherry's our paranormal mom. I gave birth to them. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> in prison. <laughs> now there's a story in itself. Story itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for I can't wait for March now. I, I look forward to it as well, and uh, I, I think we'll have a blast there that night. It might, you know, it'll be a little bit chilly, so make sure you you dress warm. But um, I'll give you the the, the uh, guided tour and get okay. in those hot spots, and we'll we'll have a good time that night. Okay. Okay. You'll be all right. You'll be fine. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll even hold your hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to make sure we take a lot of pictures and put them all over the Internet Aww. to see Bring- Lola freaking out. Hey, You'll never tell us her. Why will we be able to get from One behind? of the things Walk that the way. Sherry and everybody that day that we were first talking about me doing this, mm-hmm. um, <sighs> I, was so, I, I just had this vision all of a sudden of running out of there like a blithering idiot and, and never getting my mind back. You know, it was like, oh, I had all kinds of horrible thoughts. And yet, you know, I was willing, I'm, I'm willing to do it. I, I just. I, I can just see John sitting us down. <laughs> what did you do to Lola? To tell, to tell you the truth, Lola, I have only seen men running like blubbering idiots down the hallway. Uh, it's, it's not the women that get frightened. It's some of the guys. And um, Jordan. No. No, Jordan did run like a little no. blithering idiot down the hallway. We've got, vi- we've got video proof. We got video. <laughs> we got pictures. 
No, it's, it's usually the guys that uh, get spooked. It's usually the skeptics that have something happen to them. And uh, I take great joy in seeing something like that happen because it really makes them question their beliefs yeah. um, and the experience. And you got to be rational. Not, not everything is, is a paranormal experience. Most of the time you can explain things away. But I have seen some pretty big guys that uh, have refused to uh, walk the halls after something happens to them, and they end up out in the front lobby. Well, Jordan and I just did a tour at a place, a local place, and I tell you what, most of the women stuck along. I mean, I never heard a woman scream. Mm -hmm. Guys, I heard guys scream. I uh, Someone was on the third floor. They tried to go into a room, and it was locked, but the door, like, you know how a doorknob will turn and then, you know, go right. back because they're spring-loaded? Well, I guess they tried to turn the doorknob, and it turned. And they thought something had turned it. And they ran three floors <laughs> down. Oh now, this is four or five guys straight out the front door. And the front door locks. And so they, I mean, all four like pancakes lined up oh. straight out the door. And then they had to knock on it to let me get them back in. <laughs> I mean, it was, and I'm sitting there with a girl that didn't want to go into the basement. And, <laughs> and oh here these four guys run out and lock themselves out of the building. A building they go into every day. Oh, my. It was scary. That's well, funny. You know, last, uh, last Friday, I was at the Mansfield Reformatory up here, and I have an event that I do called a Death by Dessert. Ooh. Uh, and we have, like, 50 pounds of catered desserts. <gasps> oh, God. Know. Oh, yeah, it's great. And we have the warden's dining room all decorated up, and we have all these desserts. And then we do a one-hour walk-around tour of the reformatory, and then the lights are off, of course, and you go sun on your own for a few hours. Yeah. I had one woman who refused to leave the dining room. She came inside, walked maybe 20 feet, sat down in a chair, and for the next six hours, she sat in that room. She would not go any farther. She said it scared her to death. The rest of her group was out there traipsing around having a good old time, but she sat up there and drank coffee and, you know, ate chocolate and cheesecake. And I'd probably stay in there. <laughs> <laughs> We're scared to death. We'll be here. <laughs> I'm, I'm too afraid to be here. Give me some more chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it that she, like... Felt something when she walked in. She felt evil. Oh. She said, I feel evil here. And I said, this is a reformatory. There's a difference between reformatories and penitentiaries. Right. You know, re reformatories were supposed to, you know, inspire you to become a better person and, and you know, put you on the right path. Uh, whereas penitentiaries, you're basically there because, you know, you're going to die there. So the energy is a little bit different. I said, you know, it's not that bad out there. It's really not that bad out there. I'll walk with you. No, ma'am. I'm sitting right here. And they pay a lot of money. We, when we were at the prison last, uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, we went as our, with our group. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, people were sitting in the lobby there, and they would not go in. Right. And I'm thinking they paid money. They have took a, what, right. two, maybe an hour-long bus ride to get there. Yep. And they wouldn't leave. And we would take people, you know, come yeah, on. I remember we, we'd go, go out yeah. and pick some people that were just sitting there and say, hey, come on, walk around with us for an hour. And, you know, we'd take them around, kind of take them on a tour, let them, you know, try Yeah, but you know what? If you get a, if you get that feeling. Mm -hmm. it, I think it would be hard to overcome that. It, it is, and some people, you know, when they sign up to do stuff like this, they start off with a prison tour right off the bat, and I'm like, whoa, you know, start off with a little haunted walking tour, then maybe do a haunted dinner, you know, then do a cemetery walk at night, um, and then maybe do a prison trip or go to the lunatic asylum or, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the, the TB hospital, you know, work your way up to the big stuff, because that, that's pretty high up there. Nick and I skipped a few steps. Yeah. We're, we're well, brave. Yeah. They also brave. had their helmets on. but Yes, you know. we did. I, you know, Jordan and Nick, you were, you were trained very well. <laughs> you know, we have a really good teacher. You should meet her sometime. What was her name? What was her name? <laughs> it rhymes with cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> and scary. <laughs> Oh, jeez. All right, Sherry, this it's is uh, all the time we have for this week, so uh, we're definitely going to have you back. We yes. love having you on the show. Uh, Absolutely. We'll thank be getting you, back get together with you hopefully thank in you, March. Thank you, Nick. Thank uh, you, Lola. Oh, thanks, Sherry. Right. It's, right. it's always fun when you're on. Well, thanks thanks again for having me on there, and I'll see what I can do about getting us in, you know, where. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. You're the okay. Best. Uh, make sure to check out Sherry's uh, website, hauntedhistory.net. And uh, book some shows. Get out there with her. Let her teach you how to do it, and it'll be good good times. Well, thanks, guys. See you, Sherry. All right, take care. Bye. All right, Nikki, who we got next week? Well, next week we have uh, Susan Shepard. Now, this is on Tuesday, right? That's right. Next week we are on Tuesday because of the holiday. We can get out and start cooking our dinners on Wednesday night for, for Thursday. Get some ghosts of turkeys up and up and going, you know. 
Now, we're, we're pies, also just real pies, quick. Pies. Pies. Bake pies. Did oh. you bake the turkey before? What? No, I always bake my turkey on Thursday. Oh, I didn't know. I guess that's probably why I have dry turkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't cook from Wednesday to Thursday. Twelve hour cook is it's a good really turkey. slow cooking turkey. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so. And uh, no, we're also we're going to be putting up a page here soon. Uh, we're wanting to actually do a tour uh, at the prison for the with the radio station. Some uh, yeah. ga- you know, some uh, people out there that listen to us. We're going to invite our listeners to join us. At the pen for a night of haunting, just like you would go to Sherry's, but it'll yes. be with with uh, Us. Nick, Nick and Jordan, and Jordan and Lola. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're Hopefully having the Kersagas open- brothers. We're, <laughs> I, I, I want to get the Kersagas brothers into the prison. Uh, we we want to have uh, maybe a 30, 30 people maximum. I mean, if we need to take uh, if we have enough people sign up for two tours, we'll take two tours. But we want to kind of keep them around 30, 30 people, and uh, the tickets are going to be about forty dollars a piece. So. Uh, you got to cover our saving. cost and cost of going into the prison. Uh, <coughs> cost, you know, hopefully we'll have some equipment and stuff we can take with us and everything to let people use. So um, if you're interested, make sure you send us an email, whispers1600 at gmail.com. Or you can uh, send us a voicemail. You got that number over there? Uh, yeah, it's 973-215-9178. And that'll be at a voicemail. You won't get any. Nobody's going to pick up the phone. Go straight to answer machine. But uh, we check them, and that's a that's a U.S. call. That's not a nine hundred number or anything like that. We're not charging people. I just noticed it was a nine hundred nine number. So I want to say, what's that? Next week, what was Ch- Susan Shepherd? No, George, you you stopped yeah. him halfway through your speech. Did I say that? I'm sorry, Susan Shepherd. I I I have really bad ADD. I get <laughs> mixed up. Uh, but Susan Shepherd next week, uh, haunted Parkersburg. We'll be talking about Parkersburg, all the ghosties around town there. Um, we'll think, uh, Jerry mentioned last time she was on Sherry, um, Sherry, Trans Allegheny Library. So I'm really wanting to talk to her about that. Sherry, is so that is that there? That's in Parkersburg. So and maybe even Blennerhassett. I know I asked her about it last time. She doesn't take tours there, but she knows about it. So hopefully we can ask her about that. So uh, I think that everybody. does it for us this week. Remember that's Tuesday next week. Tuesday, and we'll tell people closer to the date. I'm sure. All right, everybody. Until next week, which is Tuesday, remember, don't be afraid, only believe.